Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Friday, April 19th, and we're here to try to help you make better financial decisions. And the way that we do that is to encourage you to do a little bit of work, not a lot, just a little bit. All you need to do is go to our website, jillonmoney.com. I'm sure you have it bookmarked by now, but just in case, bookmark it in case you haven't. And uh, if you're there, you'll see in the top right-hand corner, there is a contact us button, click that. And when you complete that form, that's the email that we often will read on the air from time to time. And if you want to appear live, just check that box. And while you're on the website, don't forget, there's all sorts of stuff there. There is a blog section, there is video, there are resources. And of course, you can always sign up for the free weekly newsletter, which comes out every Friday, which would be today. So if you haven't done that, you should. Mark assembles all the stories of the week that he thinks are kind of cool, and he does a great job doing that. Today, we are going to answer some questions that you have written to us about, and uh, I want to start with something great because this is from Chris, and the subject is all Roth all the time. Hi, Jill and Mark. I love both of your podcasts. Parenthetically, gang, we have another podcast called Money Watch comes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. I listen every day and I'm a Jill on Money live subscriber. The webinar with Ed Slot was my favorite. Mm, love that Ed Slot. Okay, here's the message from Chris. I've heard you and Mark both say you're all Roth all the time. I max out a Roth IRA and my Roth 401k every year. Note my max for the 401k is about $17,000 because I'm considered a high earner. You know, in some plans, you do get maxed out below the statutory limit. So we do know that. Okay, so here it goes. Chris says, I'm wondering if I should convert any of the money in my pre-tax 401k to a Roth so I will not be hit with big required minimum distributions down the road. We didn't have a Roth option when I started making the deposits. I know, that's the thing. A lot of people have this old money that's been building, building, building. Chris's details, salary, $200,000 plus a bonus of about thirty dollars to $40,000. And here is the 401k, $500,000, 375 of which is traditional, 115, which is Roth. There's also a profit sharing, a company retirement plan. And there's a million dollars in this, mostly in company stock. And Chris goes on to write, I need to diversify now that I'm old enough, but I haven't done that yet. That's a lot of money in one company, man. I'd be, I'd be very nervous. I, I'd make that my number one priority. Forget about the Roth. I think you know that though. Roth IRA has $300,000. There's $300,000 in a savings account. After selling a house last year, I am currently renting, but I keep the money in cash in case I do find a house $200,000 in a brokerage account, $40,000 in I-bonds. Okay, Chris is 52 and says, I'd like to work until about 60, but it is very common for people at the company I work for to leave with separation packages in their late 50s. Hmm, I'm not sure I'm gonna make it that long. I spend about $120,000 a year. Does it make sense to convert any of my pre-tax money to Roth I am in a pretty high tax bracket, single, no kids. So not sure whether or not that would make sense. I do have the cash to pay the taxes, but again, not sure it makes sense. So Chris is making two thirds. So Chris is basically in the 32% tax bracket right now. Um, top bracket, that is. So single up to 243725 The question do we have to wrestle with is, does Chris start converting now potentially pushing into another tax bracket, the 35% or not. I'm not so sure about converting because of the house situation. I think that's the, the real unknown here because the savings could be used to convert. No big deal, right? You know that. And you don't have to do it all at once. I mean, you do have 375,000. You could do a little bit at a time over the next bunch of years and maybe even just stay in the 32% tax bracket. But if you really think you're going to need some of that money for a house, <sighs> I don't know if I want to soak up my liquidity. I think that um, I would generally say yes to the conversion slowly but surely over time. And of course, you could certainly just pull the money out of the pre-tax if you are, you know, 59 and a half and you're retiring and you just say from, you know, let's say my 60 to 70, I'll start just pulling the money out. But I don't think it's an imperative. I just think that it would be good if you could unless you really believe you're going to need that money for a house. 
Okay. This is from Rod, another Roth question. Rod writes, I believe my wife and I will uh, go over the AGI limit for a Roth in 2024. Okay. We've maxed out our 401ks and HSA, so we don't believe there are any other ways to reduce our adjusted gross income. Any advice for us to still contribute to a Roth? Well, uh, you know, frankly, if you don't have any other IRA accounts, I might do a backdoor Roth. I might make a contribution into a non-deductible IRA and then immediately turn that into a Roth. That's called a backdoor Roth. So I think that would be a great idea if possible. If your 401ks are Roth opportunities as well, maybe you consider that. This is from Gina about a tax payment. Hi, Jill and Mark. I mailed my almost $4,000 check to the IRS on April 2nd. As of today, the 13th, it has not been cash. I don't want to pay interest and penalties from the time I mailed the check. What can I do? Maybe this will help a number of us out in Jill on Moneyland. Thank you. Okay, I uh, cheated on this one because I was wondering, really, what do you do? So I went to the IRS website. And so here's the answer. If it has been at least two weeks since you sent the payment to the IRS and the financial institution verifies that the check hasn't cleared your account, you need to call the IRS. I know that sounds nutty, but you call 800-829-1040 and you ask if the payment has been credited to your account. That is the general procedural answer to the question. And obviously, you're not the first one to have that because the IRS actually has that specific question on their website. Good luck, Gina. I hope that helps. This is from Sean, who writes, My wife and I both just turned 55 in the last two weeks. And after listening to your show, we have decided now is the time to do some Roth conversions. My wife has a couple of traditional 401ks from previous employers, and we want to start converting these to her existing Roth IRA. This particular account has about $10,000 at Voya that we want to convert and transfer. So the question is, can we transfer slash convert directly to her Roth IRA at First Trade, which is where our Roths are, or do we have to convert to a Roth at Voya and then roll over to the Roth IRA at First Trade? Well, Sean, you know what I would do? I would actually ask First Trade for help on this because they may be able to do it directly, but you've got to talk to them. When I have a question about these kinds of issues, I always go to the company where it's receiving the funds, not where I'm going to transfer. I mean, of course, if you had to do that interim step, it's not so terrible, but it would be nice to do it just in one fell swoop. This question is from Sarah, who resides in New York, who asks, my mother is living in New York State and has asked me my opinion about her estate planning. She has a sizable estate, which right now is actually underneath the limit of the federal estate law. But she's worried that if the law does actually go back to where it was before the most recent tax cuts, I guess that was in, she's talking about the 2017 cuts, that there could be a New York state implication as well as a federal implication. This is actually a very smart question on your mother's behalf. So let's go through this for a second. So the end of 2017, big tax law changes. And part of that was not just about lowering tax brackets and expanding the range of income on which tax brackets are assessed, but it also shifted the estate gift uh, tax rules. And as of 2024, any single individual who has less than $13,610,000 doesn't really have to worry about any estate tax. But the weird thing is, because of this sunset provision, and I think you guys heard this when we had the conversation with Ed Slot recently, because we basically have a retroactive tax law that goes back into effect There are some estates that could see the exemption basically go in half to something like five, six, seven million. And for some states, that would actually also trigger an estate tax. So what is somebody to do right this minute? I think the first thing that I would suggest is talk to the estate attorney who helped draft your mom's documents. You also may want to consider some gifting. I don't know how old your mom is, if, you know, really healthy or not so healthy, but maybe you're thinking that mom doesn't need all this money anyway, and that you could start gifting and that would 
lower the total estate amount and maybe even get under the sunset limits. So I do think it's smart to consider these um, issues right now. Remember, gang, these tax rates, they're in place for 2024 and then also 2025. But unless there is some sort of action taken, so I imagine it's going to be a very big issue for the Congress in 2025, that without that kind of action, congressional action, we're just going backwards. So it is worth thinking about these issues right now. Okay, here's our last question. This is from Allegra. We just bought a house for over a million dollars in the Washington, D.C. area after getting tired of renting for so long. Our mortgage is at just over 6% with no money down. Wow, no money, money down. My husband already has a pension of $12,000 a month and it will have cost of living adjustments. We are both 52 and he makes $200,000 a year. We have about $700,000 in a 401k, $400,000 in Roths. We also have $200,000 in brokerage accounts. I'm looking for a job, but no income at this moment. We have kids that rely on us, but with minimal education costs for their college due to military benefits. Was this a huge mistake buying a house? Seems like a high interest rate. Well, I mean, no, it's not a huge mistake. Uh, Are you actually struggling to make your ends meet? Because if you're able to meet your mortgage payments and pay all your bills and you're doing okay, then I think it's fine. I also wonder what kind of wisdom would it be for me to impart on you to tell you, oh my God, this was a huge mistake. You're in the house. Again, I'm presuming you got a mortgage with 12 grand a month and $200,000 a year. Even if you had to pull back a little bit on putting money into retirement right now, okay. So don't worry too much about it because you're making it work. And I don't think that it's it's really helpful to go back in time and say, oh my God, was this a big mistake? You are where you are. I'd love to hear more from you about this and talk you through it. But I think that based on having a big pension also, in, you know, a, a big chunk of income of 200 grand a year on top of that. I mean, it seems like a it seems like a OK thing that you did. And we can see what other things you should be maybe moving around or prioritizing while this mortgage is at over six percent. The thing about the no money down, I'm less happy about that. That makes me a little bit nervous. I would have liked you to put some money down from the brokerage account. But again, Here's where you are. So um, you can follow up with us. Happy to talk you through more of your questions. All right, that is it. That is the program. If you've got a financial question, just go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button. Let us know if you'd like to come on the air. You can tell when I do emails, I'm sometimes struggling to figure out how we're going to answer the question that you ask without as enough information. And sometimes this is not just data. It's kind of the other stuff, the emotional stuff. That's why we like talking to you much more than reading emails. Emails are fine. It's great. We love that, you, that you're that you sending us these notes, but I have so many follow-up questions. So if possible, please, we'll change your name. We'll do anything you'd like to make it a little bit less sensitive for you to be on the air, but it's much, much better if you come on the air with us. All right. Huh. Very good. All right. Don't forget on the website, you can subscribe to Jill on Money Live. That's where you have access to quarterly live webinars, as well as special bonus content. We are always happy to charge you $35 because we think that's a great value. Thank you very much. Okay. You can subscribe to this show on the Odyssey app, wherever you find your favorite podcast. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. Our music is composed by Joel Goodman. Mark Delercio is our executive producer and Web King. We're distributed by Odyssey. Try to lift someone up today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>